Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the terminology of the channel category. Now, anti-hero has been a word that's existed for a very long time. Its main intent was being what's the opposite of the pure hero, or the traditional hero, if you will. But like with many other words, or phrases and terms, anti-hero has evolved over time and it's changed. It doesn't necessarily mean exactly the same as it did back then. And like some other people, I had stumbled across how TV tropes, at least, split anti-hero up into five variations. And to refer to the different shades of gray of or the different parts of moral ambiguity. <clears throat> now, while they don't use the number typing anymore, I still kind of stick with number types. So the lower the number, the more heroic, the higher the number, the less heroic. I go by that system still, even though TV Tropes hasn't. And there might be some of the variations or the types where I might define it slightly differently. And since the intention of the terminology of the channel videos is to help provide viewers with a better understanding of how they can expect certain definitions on this channel, that's what we're going to do for this video help the viewers understand how this channel will define the five types of anti-heroes. So the type 1 anti-hero is more closely related with the classic anti-hero compared to the modern anti-hero, which are seen as more hardened compared to the pure heroes. But even then, the classic anti-hero has changed a bit and the pure hero has changed a bit compared to when it was first introduced. Because originally, an anti-hero referred to a character who had flaws and insecurities, whereas the pure hero was perfect and confident and could do no wrong. But nowadays, it's actually commonly accepted to have a pure hero still have flaws and insecurities to make them more relatable to the audience. So what does that leave for the type 1 anti-hero now that some of its characteristics have migrated over to a pure hero? For my sake and for the sake of the channel, I will define the type 1 anti-hero as more for joke heroes or heroic wannabes. You could say bumbling characters that really try to be heroes, but they're just not competent enough to be. They still can have a good heart and all, and I wouldn't call them hardened like the other types of anti-heroes, but there are some flaws. Their flaw is more that, yeah, they just don't have the, the competence to pull off the heroic bit. But maybe they can still be heroes in their other ways, too, than what is considered traditional. <clears throat> so the type 2 anti-hero will be the lightest of the modern anti-hero. They're still overall good people, but their flaw takes the form of a glaring vice or two, maybe three. Like, they would be Mr. Vice Guy or Mrs. Vice vice girl or miss vice girl you can see the pun being because nice and vice sound similar to each other <laughs> so essentially it's they're still overall good people their good qualities are still more prevalent than their vice or their vice isn't enough to eclipse their good qualities you can usually expect to see these kind of anti-heroes in disney movies to give you a good at frame of reference. Like Aladdin, I think, is a pretty good example of that. He steals, but mostly just out of necessity and survival. And he may not always be quite honest or forthright, but he's still definitely a good kid overall. 
type 3 anti-hero takes it further than the type 2. They're willing to do stuff even the type 2 might not be willing to cross. So on their best days, you could say a type 3 anti-hero would be good is not nice. They'll fight the good fight, they'll still do what's right, but admittedly they can be quite a jerk. So not the kind of person you'd want to hang out with and eat a, eat a pizza with. <laughs> on their worst days, they could be seen more as a heroic neutral. That's to say, they'd rather stay out of the good and evil conflict altogether. They'd still rather... They'd rather just do their own thing, but if trouble insists on coming to them, they're more likely to take the heroic side because evil's more likely to mess with you. <laughs> you could say Shrek would probably be a good example of the heroic neutral. He just wanted to live in his swamp, but... Trouble kept getting in his way, and he eventually did the right thing, even if he was more so motivated just so he could go back to living in a swamp. <laughs> now, the type 4 antihero is even more vicious. That's the darkest that an antihero can get while still having fundamentally good intentions, still being on the same side as the good guys, but... Yeah, they will go even further than a Type 3. Best examples I can give, or best way I can describe it, let's say that these types are more willing to do pay evil. They have more of a pay evil onto evil mentality, to say the least. And then lastly, we have the Type 5 anti-hero, the nominal hero, or the hero in name only. And the reason why they're called that, quite simple. The only reason they're considered good is because the opponents they fight are even worse in comparison, or they're on the same side as the good guys for whatever reason. You could say villain protagonists and token evil teammates would fall under this category, or this type. So there we have it, some quick definitions of what you can expect this channel to describe the five types of anti-heroes. And the video for tomorrow will actually focus on the flip side of the coin. Take care and until next time.